It's as if there was two directors. There was Michael and there was Michael Bay. And Michael Bay did the first half. No, Michael did the first half and then Michael Bay pushed Michael aside and was like, cool, let's, let's get this Dutch angle so people know the action starts here. Your favourite film is awful. Hello, and welcome to Your Favourite Film is Awful, the weekly show where we take your favourite films and defend them against negative reviews. As always, I am Luke MJ Powell, and with me today is the one and only, it's Sean Grimsley. How you doing, Sean? It, it is me, and I am well, sir. How are you? Oh, I just knocked my desk. What a terrible <laughs> start. Maybe I'm not so well. I'm in, a, I'm in an earthquake, apparently. Ah, no. <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Good. Today, as the title suggests, we are doing Michael Bay's 2005 The Island. The Island. The Island. Are you ready to go to the island is, and is, give the people at home the plot? <laughs> sure. Um, the the plot of The Island. Here we go. 2005, directed by Michael Bay, produced by DreamWorks and uh, co-distributed by Warner Brothers. Um, is a movie um, about a character called Lincoln Six Echo, played by Ewan McGregor. And Jordan, I've forgotten the rest of her name, played by Scarlett Johansson. Um, they are part of a colony of, of people in some sort of futuristic world where um, the Earth has been destroyed and there's radiation. But there's one salvation, which is the island. And every week there is a lottery in their kind of compound in which they live, where one lucky person gets selected at random to go and live on that island Uh not living underground anymore. And um, Lincoln Six Echo, uh, in following a moth, uh, <laughs> quite literally follows a moth, Yeah, <laughs> soon and slowly discovers that the, the truth about the island and where they currently live may not be exactly what they've been told. Cue hijinks. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Cue many, many hijinks. <laughs> many, many hijinks. Uh, yeah. before it's, a we get it's a sci-fi action movie. Uh, I feel, I feel like giving it a genre is, is a good idea. Yeah, too. it is. I'd, I'd almost say it was like in two halves where there's a lot of suspense and intrigue at the beginning and then it's action Michael Bay at the, in the second half. I think um, a lot of people would say this is a movie of two halves, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, but what I really quickly wanted to note, because I found it funny at the time, is that the, the, the people in the bunker are told that is, it is the future year of 2019. Really? Oh, I see that. <laughs> so close. So, so close. close. <laughs> okay, but getting into our reviews, uh, because you kind of, you, you, you mentioned some details, but you missed some details, as you and Charlie always do. And Jojo J uh, explains quite specifically what you missed uh, with a half-star review. Branding the film, retitling the film, as it were, the Matrix Recycled. <laughs> That's it. Three words. That's Three it. beautiful words. I mean, <laughs> the fact that this film was actually like part of a lawsuit that was settled for seven figures after it came out. What? For similarities to something else to do with... And I'm going to say now for all the listeners and watchers, spoiler alerts ahead. Uh, that was yes. your warning. Um, for another film about cloning... Um, yeah, they settled out of court for like seven figures and stuff for a film that really? flopped at the box office and cost a hundred and twenty something million dollars. I think bad times. You, you're the film guy. <laughs> bad, bad times for this movie. Unfortunately, in regards to that. Um, yeah. In re in regards to the review, I can kind of see that this is definitely a movie that was made post Matrix. There's no question mm. about that. But it was also oh, made. Yeah quite uh, unfortunately for, for for this movie at a time when Lost had just come on TV and was like the biggest TV show in the world about right. an island that was actually about an island um, <laughs> <laughs> you know people give this movie flack for having a bad title mm. I, I don't think it's a bad title but it's mm. it's it's not it's not great either it's kind of but it's not necessarily the title for this movie um, I think it's a great title for the first half of the film. Yeah. Because it alludes to the lie and the, and the false promise. And then you get out of the bunker and it's just... It, it, the, the island concept no longer matters. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's for sure. That is for yeah. sure. It really is a movie of two halves. But it's also... I feel like this movie came out at a time which... 
I don't know if it's like I feel like comic book movies. I think the release of Iron Man in 2008 really ended this phase where mm. we had some really hard sci-fi movies coming out with massive budgets, you know, like War of the Worlds and um it was around a similar time to this, I believe. I think it was I think it might have even been the same year. Was it 2006? All I know is Steven Spielberg was a producer on both. Um mm. and it's definitely like 50s sci like hard sci-fi. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like, yeah, comic book movies potentially ended. I can't think of any off the top of my head now that also go in line with that. But there were, I know there were a few others because when I came up with that thought earlier, I had another example that has eluded me <laughs> now. But um, yeah, I feel like this movie, like, very rare to see a film like this. You know, we had a lot mm. of movies like this in the 70s, Logan's Run um, and things like that. But um, even Running Man a little bit. But not like we don't really see films like this too much anymore i think the last no. one the last one we kind of got was maybe that jared butler one where he's in like a, a video game person is controlling him like through the things in his <laughs> yes. gamer was it gamer, gamer? gamer. yeah yes yeah, gamer yeah. oh i loved gamer the game was a film <laughs> that, that was <laughs> i film. feel like that's the best review there it was a film yeah. it was a film it existed. i remember it it happened I, i've told charlie and i i don't think i've re- mentioned it recently but i have the ability to kind of just switch off parts of my brain to enjoy a film without thinking yeah yeah, yeah. and this is one of those that at the beginning i'm like oh ooh, ooh, and then like michael bay kicks in yeah and it's like okay let's just dial it down a little bit. yeah just dial it down i think yeah. i mean let's i've got lots of thoughts on this film but let's carry on with another review let's that's carry good, on. That's, goes a bit deeper let, let's i would ra- but i will say i would rather watch this again than the matrix sequels I don't hate the Matrix sequels, so having just rewatched the second one and getting about mm. halfway through the third, the hi- highway chase sequence is the only redeeming feature of this. And I genuinely think it's one of the. I like. I thought it was okay for a really number of years, and then even re- and rewatching it recently, I genuinely think it might be one of the worst sequels I've ever seen. <laughs> like watching it back oh, yeah, to back yeah. with the Matrix, you're just like, mm. it was such a drop. Um. This is true. This has the benefit of not being connected to anything else, to my knowledge. Yes, it certainly does. Whilst, yeah, the Matrix set the standard and the other two didn't meet it. Yeah, that was the the most, you know, we we should... And changed the course entirely. Yeah, I mean, the problem with this Matrix sequels, of course, is we knew what the Matrix was, which was like one of the best marketing pitch of all time. Because Mm. not only was it the perfect marketing pitch, but the film delivered on the question... There's very few films that get to do that. Mm. And th- I don't know that The Island is one of them. <laughs> what is The Island? It's a... It's it's a... Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's continue. Let, let's. let's go to Anne Hornaday's critical review. Hi, Anne. Uh, this was written at the time. This, this was written on the Friday, July 22nd, 2005. Hi, Anne. I hope you're still with us. <laughs> Fuck <Fuck-o. laughs> out. Anyway, okay, so this is of multiple paragraphs. I'll pause as I do when Charlie is with us. Presumably, The Island, directed by Michael Bay, Hollywood's go-to guy for dumbed-down summer popcorn pictures, is a chilling contemporary cautionary tale in which the obsessive pursuit of genetic perfection and immortality is shown to have heretofore unimagined dystopian ramifications. But in all the rain, random events, and running around through the blurry chase scenes, endless vehicular pileups, and big TV-friendly close-ups of Scarlett Johansson's lips and Ewan McGregor's mole, I could discern... Only the dimmest plot. And it has something to do with a guy escaping what is either a Washington metro station or an Ian Schrauger hotel and trying to get to the set of Survivor. (laughs) And that's paragraph one. There are whole sections of that review where I felt like I was Neo meeting... The guy, what was the guy in the in the Matrix? What was his name? He meets the not the key maker. 
The, no, no, I know who you mean. Whatever his oh, name was. Shit. The, the like, Colonel Sanders looking guy. There's a whole section right early on where I was just like, ergo, vis-a-vis, here, there too. And I was like, oh, someone does enjoy Reloaded. Um, but no, <laughs> I, I can, I, I, I really like the production design of this film, actually. It's one of the things that I think re- like saves, not saves it. I don't think it's a terrible film. It's got terrible moments and some dumb ideas, but I don't think it's a terrible film. And the production design really adds to me taking it seriously. Mm. Um I think it's, I think, I think, you know, maybe not the white suits so much, but it does kind of fit that kind of Star Trek dystopian futuristic element. Of yeah, it, it really which, sells the, like, the for futuristic. For me, I was, yeah, I was fully bought into that aspect of it being futuristic. Um, less so with the flying bike thing, but um, yeah, production design wise, I, I, I won't have a bad thing said about that. I, I think that's, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 contrast that she she said <laughs> the set of Survivor when they finally appear in the desert that's that's quite funny. Um, <laughs> I think I think it points to a something in this movie that is slightly problematic, and the second half really makes it more so. Mm-hmm. That I'm not sure how much you care about what happens to these characters. The and I think that's the fault of the second half of the movie, not the first, because when. Okay. When you see Michael Clark Duncan trying to escape, mm. that is heavy and it's horrible. And it's it's some of the best stuff I think Michael Bay has done because mm. the mm. weight of it, you're like, holy, okay, I do not want Mr. Charming Ewan McGregor to go and suffer this fate. Um, yes. And Michael Clark Duncan's performance is top notch. And I think it's the thing, that's the moment where this film becomes in my opinion one of michael bay's better films i actually think this is top tier bay in terms of actually like if you compare this to something like six underground his most recent film Mm. there's actually a story in this there is a story (laughs) there's a plot there are characters it never gets it never gets so deep but it's at least swimming in the deep end which a lot of his movies they're they're barely you know character wise they just put their toe in a puddle um <laughs> so you know I, I i have a lot more love for this movie particularly the first half than i than i do for some of his other projects um and the second half of this movie whilst having entertaining action for some of it is the point at which you just like okay this is getting ridiculous and i'm i'm caring less and less about why i'm just because they're seemingly immortal for me this whole movie would be so much better if they got rid of the sequence where they are hanging from the roof and then they fall from the roof because that was the point at oh, which the my big s- R. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, big yeah. R that was the, the point at R. which my suspension of disbelief I, I just stopped believing um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the point at which the movie went ridiculous where I was like you could have actually doubled down and had all this action but make it really gritty and harrowing um, but instead you kind of went for the silly stuff which has strangely been you know what's followed the rest of his career since because after this he did the transformers movie which have you know mm. it's action without consequence and what was cool about the first half of this movie is that there's consequence and you you want to go away and it's you know there are moments in the second half don't get me wrong like when you and mcgregor gets to play two versions of himself that's really cool and he has a lot of fun doing it and that comes across on screen but i'm not sure that all of the action that's built around that second half. It's still good action. Don't get me wrong. The, the highway chase is pretty with the, the train tracks and stuff is pretty cool. And he's reused that in transformer movies. So it's got something, um, yeah. but yeah, it's um, the second half of the movie lets down the first half. The first half isn't perfect by any means, but I was far more engaged with it on a rewatch since seeing it in 2005 and thinking, actually, do you know what? I wish Michael Bay had tried his hand at a few more movies like this. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and to go off some of your points there, it, it is one of the, so for me, I, uh, it, it wasn't the falling R that was first when, wait, no, it was when, um, they're like, oh, get them at any cost. So the big truck smashes into the police car, breaking it in two. <laughs> The front half, oh yeah, those guys are fully dead. They're dead. But the back half, the, the half with our main characters, 
Mm. Fine. They're absolutely fine. Yeah. Not a scratch. Yeah. Not a scratch. Yeah. They aren't even going to limp out of this wreckage. They're going to run full speed. They're going to wish they had clones. <laughs> They're going to wish... Oh. And then when you're talking about the you and getting to play two characters which i love so, like when they're in the car and yeah. they've got the gun he's got the gun to his own head, head to lincoln's yeah. head yeah yeah tom's got the gun to lincoln's head and lincoln's like ah and just like floors it with the acceleration and tom's like whoa no what are you doing stop stop and Lincoln's like no no i'm not sorry because <laughs> if i stop you're gonna shoot me and then i'm gonna die anyway so ah yeah. which is like such a great like act I've got to say, for as wild as some of the action is, I think the reactions to action is is pretty believable. They're pretty good, like, yeah. Even when the big R, when uh, Scarlet falls down and she's just ho- holding on to... Uh, I'm, I just called it... When Jordan falls and is holding on to Lincoln's arm... Yeah. She's just screaming, pull me up. <laughs> which is 100% what anyone would say. Anyone. They'd be like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, pull me up, pull me up, pull me up, please, just fucking do it, do it. Somehow, get the will. <laughs> um, but I will say, when, after Tom is framed and dies, what I fucking hated was Lincoln immediately drops his fake Scottish yeah, accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, just, and I'm just like, You've spoken to some of these people now. They know you should have a Scottish accent. And you're talking with this RP, I want to say RP American accent. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I don't think, the problem with Ewan McGregor, he is so, he's allowed to do two accents in my head, which mm. is Scottish, his native his native accent, or Obi-Wan Kenobi. Anytime he tries anything else, <laughs> it's just pointless. It's like His American accent, I don't think is terrible. Like no. as a like as a general one, like he he hold, he can hold it, he, but mm. I it's one of those things I know when it's 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 so strange with certain people. I just don't it's buy so him odd. doing an American accent. Like I yeah. just can't. Whereas at least in this movie, it kind of makes sense for him to mm. have mm. you know switch yeah. between the two. Uh, what well, I the- find it intre- what I find most interesting about this movie is like this was the start really of Scarlet the Scarlet Johansson we know now. Like mm. this was the first big action film she tried to, and it flopped. Flopped hard. I mean, don't worry. Don't worry. She bounced back really well. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it, I find it really interesting that this is the movie that started that whole started version of Scarlett Johansson. And I don't think it's a terrible start. I think she's actually mm. really good in this film. Mm. I think this is one of those, like, for all its flaws that I'm sure we're going to discuss and have already touched upon. I feel maybe it was like the time when it came out is a big reason as to why it flopped. Oh, 100%. I don't think the film itself is bad. I actually quite like the film currently before we get into all the reviews. Like, maybe that decision changes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I actually quite like it. I think it's a, it's a good film. So for it to be such a flop, ap- apart from the fact that it's a Michael Bay film, it does surprise me. And even yeah. then, like... Michael Bay films of recent time, even the most dumb explosive explosion fest seems to rake in the dollars. So. Yeah, I think it's interesting. His most recent film is Netflix. Like, I'm not sure what that says about his position in the box office because after this movie, he's just been the Transformers guy, right? Like, other than like, I know he did mm. Thirteen Hours, which was again actually much like this, had some good character work. It it then became jingoistic nonsense. Um, yes. But it had some good character work. Um, and then he also did uh, Pain and Game, which I actually quite like as a movie. I think that's, uh, you know, it's... But again, it's... That's a that's a very... Ex- that's an exploitation film of sorts. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I would just... I feel like this was Michael Bay potentially flirting with trying to do a Steven Spielberg movie for a bit. And the fact that Steven Spielberg was a producer on this, arguably was going to direct it. And the other movie that I couldn't remember earlier was Minority Report, which this is a lot like. Yes. Very similar. And th- the fact that Minority Report and War of the Worlds were both Spielberg trying to do this hard sci-fi. And f- War of the Worlds, not so much successful, but Minority Report, very successful. That was a better take on how to match your first half and your second half of your film together with character stuff whereas yeah. this is literally it literally splits in the middle like there That's... is n- with maybe the ex- ex- 
the exception of like some of what Steve Buscemi gets to say and do, you know, like the moral quandary of it all and how he actually recognizes that even though they're clones, they're real people and they have feelings. Um, yeah. My biggest criticism of the film though, no, you know, going in knowing that the back half is stupid, I can still fully enjoy it. And, yeah. but my biggest criticism of the film is that Scarlett Johansson doesn't get enough to do. I feel like if they'd given her character mm. a little bit more autonomy, instead of just making it about, lincoln having to be the hero i Mm. think it it could have been even more successful on that back end because the whole front half of the movie is about the two of them and the second half of the movie even though he saves her in the first half a little bit it still carries on being about her being saved to some degree yeah i like thinking about it i don't think she actually does anything in the film it's ironic that the person she was bred to be a clone for was of like one of the most famous supermodels in the world and it's like well you've cast Scarlett Johansson well there because Mm. you know she's notoriously well known as one of the most beautiful movie stars on the planet but at this point she wasn't do you know what I mean it's like you know I can absolutely believe that first on that list was Angelina Jolie in 2005 um but you know that list now would be Scarlett Johansson so you know Mm. great casting in that regard (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timeless casting. Right, let us continue to paragraph number two, which I've cut the end off because it just rambled at the end. That's as far as I can make out. Of course, it's early yet, and somewhere the island is still running. All 274 hours of it. (laughs) I had to duck out to make a deadline. What am I missing? Another car chase? Surely. Or another grisly scene of medical malfinescence, whether in the form of implanting tiny crawling robotic critters under someone's eyelid, or some unsavoury business involving a bone saw. And yet, one more reference to, or rip-off from, Blade Runner, or Logan's Run, or Gattaca, or Minority Report, or The Island of Dr. Moi, or Austin Powers. <laughs> um, I, I don't... It's so strange, isn't it? Because I wonder how much of people saying this is a rip-off comes from the fact that it's Michael Bay. Like, mm. at what point does it become a rip-off? Because for me, I had no issue with the fact of going like, oh, the bugs, that's very Matrixy. Like, it didn't... It didn't come from a place where I was like, this is so derivative that it's unoriginal. Yeah. I was like, I mean, it's not... I still think it's a lot of fun. Like, I, I think I think the first half really holds up on a, on a rewatch. And mm. yeah, fine, it's it's derivative in some places, but I think it's still its own thing in, in amongst all of that. And, you know, I think this is fairly light. It's got some heavier moments, but mm. I think this is fairly light, hard sci-fi. And I, I don't think this is. How can I? How can I say this? Michael Bay's never made that one film where people can go, "Oh, wow, he's actually," like, you know, like I don't think they take him seriously as a filmmaker. And no. for someone, that, and you know, box office isn't everything. You know, just because you make money doesn't mean a product is good. But there's something that people enjoy about it, or certainly they used to. I don't, I'm not sure where he stands anymore, to be honest. But love him or hate him he has his own voice he does his own thing and you to some degree you know what you're going to get i like this yeah. film more because i think as much as you do get some of that there's also some other fresh bits in this you know you go back and watch the rock the sequence where all the soldiers like are standing off against each other shooting each other that's fucking great like there's some really mm. good emotional stuff in that but for every one of those scenes he also has the nick cage love romance in that film which is just so badly written that it's yeah. almost <laughs> farcical and so it's like for him to make a completely whole cohesive film that you know i i think pain and gain is probably the closest he's come but mm. again he's it's a it's it's a genre unto his own in terms of being exploitative that you he's never made that rich thing 13 13 hours has got some great stuff in there i i i wouldn't say i'm like the world's biggest michael bay fan but i kind of get frustrated when he does when he constantly just does the extra explosion for the sake of doing it i kind of i really really want him to just sit there and focus and just reel it in a little bit because he could Mm. and i think this movie proves it he can do 
he can do some really good sci-fi stuff in a Ooh. in a Spielbergian way. It will never be Steven Spielberg because they but they're different filmmakers. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but I I feel you know when Bruce Willis dies at the end of Armageddon, I'm upset. You know, like mm. he can like that's in the storytelling and the filmmaking. He can do it. I just wish he would focus more. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. It's it's it is one of the especially now he's kind of been put into that box. It's almost um Oh, who's that recent who did old? Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Um in a similar way to Shyamalan of um how you get as a director you get profiled. Sure. And you kind of are expected to do these things now. So for Michael Bay, it uh, for Shama, it's uh, it's the twist. It's the big twist, and that fucking ruined him because now everyone's expecting a twist. If it's not there, he's shit. If it's guessable, it's shit. <laughs> if it's shit, it's shit. Um, but and if it's good, me, it still works. Like it's if, if it's good, yeah, yeah, if it's good, then well done. I don't but think his I don't think his storytelling has become the problem. Like I really enjoyed mm. old, and as much as you could say the ending of old is a twist. I kind of was like, no, I, it, he didn't play it as a twist per se, and I was I was fully on board for it. Um, okay, but for me, it's his dialogue where he takes. The yeah, issue. his dialogue's not. It's best, suddenly, but... Somehow, it's gotten so much worse over the years as well. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, but yeah. anyway, sorry, carry on with your thought. Well, uh, my thought was that um, Michael Bay is explosions and Soldier Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, which you can see heavily in like some of the later Transformers. Uh, the last Transformers I watched was The Last Knight, which I think is the last one that came out. I gave up after three because I had yeah, a mu- yeah. I had a hangover from watching three the next day. <laughs> like it actually gave me a hangover. Um, That's but I, but I did. Fair. Here's the thing though, right? And this is the thing that frustrates me about him doing all those Transformers movies. Travis Knight, the guy that. Um, started Leica Studios, who you're obviously you're a big fan of, directed big fan. The, the Bumblebee movie. And oh, big fan! I will put my, I will happily say that is the best Transformers movie for me. Like, yes. um, and it's because Michael Bay wasn't doing it. I, I, like the Bayhem version of Transformers, I, I think the first one's fun. You still yeah. can't see anything. Whereas Travis Knight made an actual animated film with real people. Like it's mm. just, like the the storytelling shape of it as well. The way that you can see the you know the the character arcs and stuff in it it's like it's f- i like that movie more not necessarily because the transformers but i think they actually just made a good human story in that that was kind of like old school it felt like a proper 90s animated film yeah and it's like that's the thing that i think bay is missing we know you can do the action and sometimes you prove to us again and again and again he does, and he does prove it again and again and again. He can do actual good character moments, but he can never make the two coalesce as one whole thing, and it's yeah. so frustrating. I think I I like this movie because you get 50% of both in equal measure. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it's very it's true. like okay, yeah, I, I do think this is one action scene too long, 100%. I can't disagree with that, but mm. I will happily sit here and defend this movie against negative reviews that sw- like say it's absolutely trash because I don't think it is trash. I think there yeah. is more to this than you know Pearl Harbor. Mm. But that's good because that's why you're here. <laughs> so after that, there were two paragraphs that are just kind of rambly. So let's, let's skip to near the end. They're running from the baddies. But midway through, they also start running from one movie, a sleek, speculative fantasy in which everyone dresses like an Olympic fencing champion, into another, more conventional action thriller in which the cars may look different, but still speed, screech, slam, and blow up in satisfying testosterone fueled blasts. This is the territory Bay, best known for effects-driven no-brainers like The Rock and Armageddon, clearly feels most comfortable in, and as he returns to do it again and again. McGregor and Johansson, neither of whom is the first actor you'd think of for this kind of trashy summer fair, are instantly forgettable in roles that essentially amount to not getting in the way of logos for MSN, Cadillac, Xbox, and Nokia. 
Yeah, I mean, it's well known that Bay funds a lot of his movies by product placement. Um, oh, yeah. It's it's incredibly well known. And the fact that he's a commercial director probably works into that as well. <laughs> it is pretty heavy-handed in this. I'm always more forgiving of it when it's in a movie set in the future because mm. I feel like that commercialization and, and corporate greed is part of a dystopian future. And looking from Blade Runner to now... I feel like we head towards that more and more, you know, mm. when when wearable glasses and stuff do really cut, start coming into play, we're going to have personalized adverts on mm. blank billboards if we weren't wearing the glasses. So it's like, I do, it for me in this movie, it doesn't bother me so much, but I've also never really watched a movie like where someone's just like, give me a Coke and then gone, I need a Coke. Do you know what I mean? Like we've only got Pepsi or Pepsi, like... I personally, yeah. consciously, have never done that. I'm more likely to walk out of the movie taking on like personality traits of the main character, which I think, <laughs> <laughs> which is more risky in my opinion. That that is pretty bad. Don't watch so, American Psycho. It do- <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't bother me too as much as I think it bothers other people. Mm. Um, because I can kind of be like, well, that's how they got the movie made. You know, if that's what it took, you know, so be it. Um, yeah. I've, I've kind of, sorry, in, in trying to justify that, I've forgotten some of the other points of review. Oh, um, I I can see their point at that time. Ewan McGregor coming off of Star Wars, I think mm. he was trying to, you know, capitalize on that. Clearly didn't work. And he hasn't really done action films since then, really. He's kind of, he's he's, mm. he's not really done them a great deal that I that I can think of. So I d- maybe he lost interest in it completely different direction. Scarlett Johansson, on the other hand, at the time I could understand why people didn't like her casting because she wasn't the Scarlett Johansson that we know now. I actually think she's good yeah. in the role. I think you know she proved her worth. I think other people clearly thought that too. Otherwise, she wouldn't have become Black Widow or Ghost in the Shell or what was it, Lucy? Was it Lucy? That was the Luke. Yes, it was one. Lucy. Did, do you know what I mean? Yes, Any of those mid- kind of movies. Um, so. I'd watch this over Lucy any day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, in regard to the advert stuff, it is always funny to see what products. Oh, yeah. Because there, there's some, as it says, MSN has a massive cameo in this film. It's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> and it's like, is MSN still a thing? I don't... Th- well, Messenger Sony is gen- it was, yeah, the it was one gone. of the biggest things in my life in 2005, though. Yes. You same. know, so BRB, MSN. Mm. For, I don't remember the last time I typed that, but it's been oh, over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> I would but, hope. No. Uh, it's crazy. Um, We've kind of already hit the whole fact that it is a movie of two halves. Oh, yeah. And Anna kind of nails that on the head. Um, Testosterone fueled. I will say that uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I had forgotten. So this was a rewatch for me, okay. and I had forgotten that ScarJo was in this film. Yep. Until she made her appearance, and I went, "Oh fuck yeah, she's she's the lead actress in this film." <laughs> I would bank money on ScarJo forgetting that she was in this film as well. <laughs> <laughs> she was what? How old was she when she did this? Twenty? Oh, she must have been young. Nineteen, twenty. Mm. So she was young, you know. She was, and but then you and McGregor, uh, Lincoln. Although there's nothing for me, there's nothing really that notable about that character. I think he, it's the, he did the role well. I do, I agree. Um, it's just fi- it's it's unremarkably fine. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, who else is in this? Uh, Steve Buscemi's great. Always great. Always fun. Um, Sean Bean is during his like I'm gonna die in every film. I mean, phase I don't, of his has life. that ever ended? It's just Sean Bean taking a role. Like Sean Bean was like, I built a new conservatory, so <laughs> need to pay for that. Wife, wife crashed car, so I need new car. I do I, my I do Michael Bay movie, pay for car. I know you're going for a northern, but all I hear is Yorkshire. Oh, he's from I'm, York- I'm hearing like he's, Isn't he from Yorkshire? Is he? Yorkshire's oh, in the north, he but he's from Yorkshire, isn't he? Is no, he- I'm hearing like southern su- southern farmer, not Yorkshire. Oh, right. You're- mixing- yeah, I'm hearing 
Maybe it is one of the same. No. It's got like a deeper thing. That is a solid. Uh, given my name is Sean, I think that is a I pretty. Think, yeah. It's not. Maybe I'm, I'm mistaken. No. I'm a Luke. What? What I've say do been... I have over the voices of Sean's? I d- <laughs> when I was a kid, I am. Um, I think he's in Patriot Games. He's in a movie with Harrison Ford where he's like an IRA terrorist. I'm pretty sure it's Patriot Games. Um, okay. And there's a sequence, and I'd, I'd seen this when I was a kid. I can't. I must have been like seven or eight years old, something like that. It was on TV, mm. and it was like dr- fancy dress at this football academy that I was doing the next day, and you got like a you won a prize. So I just like cut out some holes in my 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 black thing and made a balaclava like in that movie, and mm. we all stood up, and I'm just dressed in like like an essentially an IRA terrorist, <laughs> and uh, and the guy comes to me, he's just like, "Who are you supposed to be?" And I just went, "Sean Bean." <laughs> <laughs> and they just all of the adults just started laughing because like they're just like how is this Sean Bean scarred me to this day I just wanted to bring that up um, that that actually scarred me as a child and I felt so oh. embarrassed but actually when I watched Patriot Games again as an adult I was like that's what it fucking was I was spot on I was a movie yeah. I was a movie nerd before I even knew I was a movie nerd so uh, it was shout just out the fact that you said the actor not the character yeah exactly I didn't know what the character was called but I knew it was Sean Bean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have like the the flip issue that I normally run into, where I'm like, oh yeah, it's it's, it's the guy who played that guy, and in this other film he played that guy. <laughs> Who's that actor again? Who's that actor? Yeah, no, it was, it was I was like, this is the actor. You you try and yeah. keep up. <laughs> so I'm killing it, killing it, doing the best I can. <laughs> right, last paragraph. Next to that stuff, special effects run a close second in Bay's affection, and here they're lavished with all the care and attention to quality that just couldn't be spared for some extras on the, as the script. Spared for some, yeah, no, that is what it says. They're admittedly well executed, even in those scenes in which McGregor appears with himself, Reportedly, the ending had to be reshot with McGregor and Bean, not only in separate rooms, but in separate countries. You'd never know it, but you don't much care either. If you find yourself at the island, I have only three words of advice. Vote yourself off. <laughs> Survivor reference. Survivor. I didn't know that McGregor and Bean were in separate locations. I didn't know that either. I mean, it makes sense. They did do a lot of reshoots on this movie. I, mm. I, you know, for a movie that essentially sounds like it was also a lot of it was made up and remade up as it went along, which, you know, oh, really? a lot of blockbuster movies are. Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't. Like, the Mission Impossible's mm. are sometimes made up as they like, go along, and I just can't fathom that, because there's normally, they're, especially the Christopher McQuarrie ones, they're so intricate and so tight. Yeah. Whereas other movies, some that I've worked on, that I won't name, I've done whole days of work on them that aren't in the final film. So it's oh. like, <laughs> I'm just like, what? And not because the scenes got cut, because like what was being said wasn't part of the film anymore. <laughs> so um, it's uh, yeah, it's a strange it's a strange way to make a film. I don't think this film mm. necessarily is the worst example of that. You, you can mm. I think you can see it in some places, but I think it holds together as a, as a whole movie. I just wish that it was a a tighter, cohesive movie in terms mm. of like I think it worked. I think the first half works better and would have been more interesting if they carried on in a similar way with some action elements. Yes. Um, um, as opposed I, to all action. Yeah. Yeah. It does get a bit heavy handed with the action sequences. Uh, I will say though, um, cause I already commented on it. I kind of, I love the, the Hugh McGregor playing off his self element to the film. Me too. Like, I think it's really, it's one of the best examples of it that I've seen. I like think in so the car too. And stuff. It's just yeah. so seamless. I like this, but I like the stuff in his apart in his apartment mm. as well. Like just the subtleties of how you know that the the actual guy that like the the was it what's his what's the real uh, person Tom Tom, Tom Tom Lincoln Tom Lincoln that's it. Um, you know that guy just the way that he looks at Scarlett Johansson and just link like you're just like this guy's a fucking asshole. Like he oh, just yeah. He's no. so creepy. And it's like that's that's there's some you know that's some good subtleties in you know in in the filmmaking there and the performance and yeah, I think it's better than Transformers. 
Mm. No, yeah. I mean, was it ever really in competition? Well, no, it was, and it lost the competition really bad because we've got so many sequels of Transformers. Yeah, was the I mean, island is alone. I still, I still enjoy the first one, but again, similarly, I enjoy that first one more because of Shia LaBeouf's charisma. Yeah, and how that carries the movie. You know, he's, mm. that's. I think that's how Michael Bay gets away with a lot of dumb action, and why you know the Mark Wahlberg <laughs> ones for me are way less because Mark Mark Wahlberg doesn't have that same level of charisma to carry those movies in between. Well, it's also the character. Isn't he playing more of like an army man? He's playing a he, sad. Like I'm a, an inventor. I'm an inventor. Yeah. He invents oh. stuff apparently. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's more of that like stereotypical. Has more of his shit together. Yes. While Shia LaBeouf, in, like the character he's playing, just has no shit together. Yeah. <laughs> the rolling lovable, with the punches. The lovable so loser. Mm. Okay, what time we're at? Okay. So this next one is from Ryan Carroll, 88. It's a one out of ten. The movie takes a controversial biological slash ethical issue and handles it with all the tact and seriousness of a Ghostbumps serial. In the end, it's nothing more than a prolonged futuristic chase scenario with lots of colour filtering. Why did they have to make the entire movie look orange and blue? It's a shame because there were a lot of talented actors at work here. I mean, the, 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 the teal and orange look is, is you know, a, an icon of cinema. It's an icon mm. of the sky. So <laughs> I'm fine with that. That doesn't bug me. Um, yeah, I, t- it, I can understand. It's, it's a frustrating film because, like, I can understand why people don't like this. But I wonder now, going back, having seen what else Michael Bay has done since, if yeah. on reflection this movie might get a relook. You know, like... I remember when Speed Racer came out and people were like, this movie's so ahead of its time. Like People are going to look back on this and realise it was so much better than it was. We don't. But I actually <laughs> feel like The Island never made that claim, but actually yeah. kind of qualifies for that status. It's mm. it's got. I think it's got a lot more going on than people give it credit for. Um, don't get me wrong, it's still got all that dumb Bayhem stuff and it is absolutely 20 minutes too long. But yes. There are there are some great scenes in this, and um, I don't know. I I would what twenty I, minutes? I don't think it is. It's like I mean, it is like quite a long. It's, one. T- it's two hours twenty, isn't it? It's something. It it's the same length. It's, it's like nearly the same length as the Dark Knight for Christ. <laughs> it's like that is true. But it is a film. I think because it got like, to a point, and you just like switch off your brain, and you lose concept of time. But it's why the it's first too- half works because they actually spend a whole hour and a bit like doing that whole stuff. So like you really are set in that world. But then they mm. go, oh, we're also going to do an hour and a bit of the of the other half. So the other it, half, it's, yeah. It, finding a balance, I think, would have been a better choice. But mm. I'll st- I'll stand by it. I I, I like this film. I yeah, I can yeah, see yeah. myself watching it again one rainy Sunday afternoon when I'm alone. God, that was that sounded way more depressing than I meant. But you that know what I mean. Very depressing. Yeah. So that, um, but... As not a color theorist, color, color applier, I have very limited knowledge of of how video filmmaking works. But the orange and the blue, the blue I assume would be near the the beginning. All the stuff in the in the silo, right? Where it's, yeah, it, it's it's and it it would lean into that kind of sanitary futuristic stuff so it makes sense why it's there and then they go up st- up upstairs <laughs> to what i can only assume is the desert maybe yeah, it's the, the desert Arizona so they own a desert yeah and That's then they introduce desert. the classic orange and teal throughout so like exactly. you know it's 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 the it, same it's kind of that dirty grimy f- normal it's, future it's, shit yeah it's the, is... but it's the same look he does on pretty much all of his movies and it's it's synonymously tied to like 90s action and he still mm. does it and he still does it in ba- he did it in bad boys he did it in the transformers he movies did do it in bad boys. you know and it's it's like mm. it's part of the genre it's you know it's for me mm. it's the same as the mexico filter it's just sort of <laughs> yeah i will say though there is a point so they they reach the surface yeah. and then they go to the bar and that's the first time I, I remember seeing 
not the first time ever, but the first time in this film, seeing the classic Michael Bay, like, off-angle, upwards... The Dutch. ...shot. The yeah. Du- yeah, the upwards Dutch angle of the two characters, and they're like, this is the Michael Bay part. Starting now, it's yeah. Michael... It's there as if it there goes. was two directors. There was Michael, and there was Michael Bay. And Michael <laughs> Bay did the first half. No, Michael did the first half, and then Michael Bay pushed Michael aside and was like, cool... Let's, Let's get this Dutch angle so people know the action starts here. It's almost like the first half of this movie is someone that has like bounced back from a cocaine addiction. And like people are given a chance. It's like, he's really going to make something here. And then halfway through the, <laughs> and halfway through the production, he's, he starts doing coke again. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's dark. Yeah, I um, mean, but you know, if the stories are led to be true, that's Michael Bay, so... Yeah. Oh! I've just remembered a point that I was meant to bring up earlier. But I'll bring it up now. In reference to like the when we were talking about how there's loads of uh, uh, imagery that's derogative, derogative of other films, derivative. Sure. Yeah, derivative yeah. of other films. Because of this podcast, and because now I've watched Heat. Oh yeah. There was a shot that is just fully from Heat, <laughs> like like the whole black face masks. Uh, guns Gun, in the street, yeah, and yeah. I was just like, "That that's heat. That's heat, that is. That's heat right there. That's heat right there. What? It's just a load of people pretending to be police officers shooting shooting up the streets with a big black hockey mask, and I was like, hey, it's heat. <laughs> that's that Michael Mann classic. Yeah. Hidden in this Michael Bay film. I wish Michael Bay could do something a bit more Michael Mann. Give him, like, the... I'd love to see Michael Ma- like Michael Bay's version of Heat. Because the script's mm. all there, and the action potential for it is still really high. So it's like that's what's frustrating. It's like he's one of the most iconic action directors of all time. Yeah. But he's never made a film with a script that's like great enough to justify mm. it. All. Do you know what I mean? It's like this, and this this one comes so achingly close for a long time that it's yes. it's frustrating. Um, I will say that scene in a bar you just mentioned very funny. I always enjoyed that scene. I think it's a yeah, really the funny. Yeah, scene. great. Yeah, I think it's really funny. Especially, like, the two bits. Like, basically, just the entire t- time you're there. When it's like, oh, yeah, do you want that drink straight up? And she just looks straight up yeah. at the ceiling. That's fun. Hilarious. Like, that's some good stuff. I really, I mm. think that's some good writing. I enjoy that. Yeah. It, it's like the occasional nice character beat that gets lost 10 minutes after that yeah. beat. Yeah. Okay. Where we yeah. Okay. Last one. This is from Jeffrey Butcher, is is a half star. I've seen this film before, but it was called The Clonus Horror. Michael Bay has a tendency to recycle ideas, and as a lover of film, it pisses me off. He uses frames of his Transformers film, Transformers franchise, to fill gaps in this rebooted crap fest. Originality is absent and replaced with a teenager's wet dream. I mean, that review is wrong. He actually used sequences from this movie in the Transformers films. So, <laughs> yeah, get your facts right. Get Jeffrey. your facts right, you fatty. Um, silly boy. Silly Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> or other, depending on what you identify as. Um, but yeah, I think the, the movie the that clothes... he mentions, yeah, I think that is the one that sued him and settled for like seven figures. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can't say the film isn't derivative when that happens. Yes. But, but at the same time, it's like, how do you know? How do you know? It doesn't bother me. Do you know what? It really doesn't yeah. bother me because, you know, how many, what, how, there are, you know, there are people that have been sued for songs and you're mm. just like, that doesn't sound that much like it. And then you hear other songs and you're just like, how is nobody sued? <laughs> like, I do not understand. How is this not the song that people are suing yeah. for? Um, the 1975 those... and Prince, and also the 1975 and David Bowie, and also the 1975 and Peter Gabriel, all in the same 1975 song. Yet somehow <laughs> they haven't been sued by three of those different estates or people, yeah. and I do not understand. That is bizarre. Um, what I was going to say is, I've said on the channel before, um, and I think Charlie and I think even you may have touched on it before. There aren't any original ideas. Nah. There's only like recycled concepts that you just mix a different, uh, mix a little different with a bit of your own spice thrown in, and that's what originality is. And as so, has been said many times, the author is yeah. dead. 
you know, mm. it's all about the reader. You know, exactly. how, I think probably at the time, I, <clears throat> excuse me, at the time I originally saw this, my knowledge of the references probably wasn't as high as it is now. Mm. It's, it's a Michael Bay film. It doesn't bother me. It's, it's like it's not trying to be, you know, eight and a half. It's, it's like <laughs> it's, it's a Michael Bay film. I can let it go. Yeah, it's what it is. It is what it is. Why? What, you know? What why? Do, why don't we get mad about the dancing in Pulp Fiction? Because it's a great homage. Uh, where does that line between homage and just straight up copy come? I don't know. DreamWorks knows because they paid a lot of money to find out. But <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, that's fair. It doesn't bother um, me. No, nah, it doesn't bother me. that. It, that- it would have to be like a full carbon copy to bother me. Yeah, me too. Like, but even then, like, you know, put like how much would it? Yeah, I think it would bother me if. <laughs> could you imagine, if two two directors released the exact same film, like exact same film reels, but just changed the name to directed by, directed by, and then just released it as two separate movies. And see who's won. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who was de- who was amazing. derivative of who? Mm. Mm. <laughs> see, this this is what needs to happen. Get two big directors, work together, make a film, but then don't credit each other in each other's releases. I think oh, Richard Linklater amazing. would be up for that kind of experiment. Mm. That's the kind of thing that Linklater would do. Okay, do it. Try yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the title of the episode, we, we've spoken enough, is The Island Awful. Because there I, have been times when you've you've praised yeah, a film, but in your I heart don't, you're like, it's I, shit. Do you know what? I don't think it's awful. I think mm. it's I think it sits right in between the two, because... The ah, fir- the you first, got to sit on the fence again. Yeah, no, but the first half is awesome, and the second half, it isn't awful. Yeah. So I would say it teeters more into awesome mm. than it does okay, awful. okay. I so like, you. like on a scale of like, if that's the fifty-fifty, I'm like okay. here, I'm like here with it. Okay, that's acceptable. I, I'd and, say that's uh, still an awesome. And I, I, you know, I don't know. What, I can totally understand why other people are here with it, or other people mm. are here with it. But yeah, I sit, I sit on the awesome side of it. So yeah, I actually, you know, I'm gonna go ahead. I think it's awesome. Yes, uh, I agree. I fully agree. As yeah. I've met, I haven't disguised this at all. This film is awesome. It, it's not the top tier awesome, but it's it's in there. It's, yeah. it's happily wedged amongst the other not sh- awful films. Would I watch <laughs> this again? I already have, and I absolutely mm. will. I think oh, you yeah. have a lot of fun with this. This is a really good movie for like putting something on for an easy easy night, you know, with some friends or whatever. It's like this is better than you think. That actually, that's what I like this movie for. I like this movie as one of those wonderful ones where you go this is better than people tell you it is this is better mm. than you think it is um and then that way it gets to be a surprise yes even this, you know i've been slagging off the action side of it relative to the first half some of the action in this is really cool like oh yeah like i i feel like i've been disingenuous to it so yeah I, awesome oh, yeah. I'm getting, apart I'm getting from, with awesome apart from the big r bit i didn't i didn't care for the big r or the but, or them crashing through the office. I was like, you're taking this a step too far now. Like I feel mm, like, but that leads into the R. So like, yeah. So that, it's one thing. Basically, don't let Lincoln get onto the flying motorcycle to escape. Correct. Give him a different way to escape. Correct. And then you you you, you get rid of that entire bit. Correct. And then you win. Um. Cool. Hey, hey, Sean, real quick. Quick question, right? Go ahead. Very go quick ahead. question. I'm here. I'm here for you. Um, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad because this is very personal. It's very it's deep, meaningful time. What do you double bill this with? Oh, damn. I forgot that question was coming. <laughs> Mother fucker. Um, Tricked. Uh, if I may. Go I ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, Gemini Man. Ooh. Will Smith. You know acts what? off himself. Charlie, and you know what? Charlie you told watched... me to watch this. Mm. Charlie told uh, me to watch this. I would this. watch Gemini Man first. Interesting. And then watch this because of how they how how it's uh, presented and the techniques used. I, I feel 
Interesting. It would be interesting. Interesting. I'm going to double bill this with the Lone Ranger, the Disney Lone Ranger from 20... I want to say maybe 13. It might have been 14. Okay. Um, and purely because it's on that list, it will it can join on that list of films that people told you are bad and flopped that I actually think are, are better than that and are good. Um, oh, okay. The Lone Ranger sits very, very close to the top of that list for me. Uh, I really want to do it on the show. But oh. uh, yeah, I, I'll double bit it with that. Just as films that you were told were awful and flopped, mm. but aren't actually as bad it didn't deserve to flop as hard as they did. Yes. Which there are many of. There are. So strange. How many f- clone films are there? I feel like when I was watching it, I, I felt like I could reel off loads of films, but then the moment I was like, okay, let me think of some, I had one other film, which was Gemini Man. And then no, it depends the level at which, you know, they're the clones, you know, like if you look mm. at, you know, Soylent Green, for example, it's like they're being bred for meat. So it's like, you know, to eat. I've not seen that. Oh, yeah, it's a great movie. Great movie. Oh, okay. And that's one of those 70s kind of dystopian future ones as well, mm. um, which I always thought that this one borrowed quite heavily from. But, you know, it's... um, I, I Look, if we're saying that we can't ever do another clone movie, then that's that's silly. Because that still, that's like saying you can't do another zombie movie. People are going to be making zombie movies forever now. Um, so, yeah. Well, I, I feel like they're going to move on to... What is the next big monster? Because they've done vampires, and then they did well, zombies. I'm, I'm all for a quiet place cinematic universe. Like, those monsters in design are so good, depending on your location of where you mm. are in the world. Like, you're in an Alaska station, you can do a Quiet Place movie like The Thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, The Snow. And how would you, mm. like... I Like, if you do it on a cruise ship. Like, if you yeah. do it in the desert. If you do it um, by the beach. If you do it in a... Fo- like, those movies have got real potential depending on where you are in the world. And I, I kind of, like, think it has the limitless potential at, at, of the zombie franchise because... Yeah. Dependent, you know, all zombie movies really are made or broke on what the setup is. You know, like yeah. you can't just do oh the Dead Arising movie anymore. You have to do something with a twist. So that's why like robbing from Las Vegas, which is full of zombies, is like that's a great idea. Bad film, but great <laughs> i but great idea. It has great, for, bits. It great, great bits. Great idea it. for a movie as well. Mm. And it's like so I think the potential, you know, and zombies have been around for like 50 years now. So they it's, it's, they've been around for a long time and there's still good zombie movies coming out every so often that I'm mm. like, you know, that's not, that's not write anything off. But yeah, I'm really keen to see what Jeff Nichols does with A Quiet Place 3, different place, different family. I think he's a filmmaker with the exact right temperament f- for doing something like that. Mm. And I, you know, I, I, I kind of hope that they give it to someone else. Like I'd really like to yeah. see, you know, what would... What would Jason Bateman do with a Quiet Place movie? Because you know, like that guy does Ozark. I'm very curious to see mm. what would John Carpenter do with a Quiet Place film. Like, I think the franchise of that is bit like an oil rig. I'd love yeah. to see that. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's give me that. It does have longevity? I'll give I that. think so. I okay. take one of those we've, movies we've, every few years. Yeah, we've got massively off track. Okay, Sean, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Point point the people. I'm I'm pretty sure you were saying that you're still busy, but point the people to the places. Yeah, I'm I'm very busy. Thank you for all my uh, loyal customers and uh, clients. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I need a week off though, so if you, <laughs> that would be nice. But no, uh, Sean Grimsey Films. Uh, Google it. S Grimsey Films. Google it. I'm there. I'll be the uh, I'll be the person that pops up and uh, yeah, check it out. Or go onto the OMDb. There's a list of credits for films I've worked on that aren't there too. Oh, houses, I so yeah, that. I have lots of camera equipment. As my recent house move will attest, it's very heavy. <laughs> oh, I bet. Uh, and for more from your favorite film is awful. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. Is that it? I think that's it. And that's your favorite film is awful. Apart from Twitter, which is Fav Film is awful. Otherwise, I hope that you've enjoyed the episode. I hope that you're having a lovely day. And with that. Bye-bye. Peace out. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 What's your favorite? Don't. God, that's awful. Favorite? Awful. Awful. Your favorite?
favorite film. Awful. 